Today, I am here at Iron Root Republic Distillery in Denison, Texas, with the Licorice Brothers, who make world-class whiskey like this. Ooh. And this, delicious stuff, but that's not what we're doing today. That's right. Okay, here's the plan, guys. Uh, I still want you to basically make bourbon. Okay. But you're not allowed to use anything on premise. We're gonna go to a store somewhere, and I'm gonna make you guys pick ingredients off the shelf. Is there a, you look surprised? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so we need a, a, something iconically Texas. Is there somewhere we can go? Bucky's. Well, I have a question. What is a Bucky's? <laughs> Bucky's is probably the largest and cleanest gas station uh, in the world. It's uh, essentially like a mini Walmart. Yeah, you get everything from uh, um... Uh, toothbrushes with Bucky on it, to pajamas with Bucky's on it, and every kind of food you want with Bucky's on it. And the uh, the mascot is a what? It's a beaver. A beaver. A beaver. A beaver. A beaver. Can we take a minute to remember and appreciate that this is a gas station? Marsha, aka the mother of Texas whiskey, aka the anchor, the base of Iron Root, is going to be fittingly in charge of pitting the quote unquote base grain. Robert, on the other hand, is generally known for bringing the flair, the spice to Iron Root Republic, so he is in charge of picking the flavouring or specialty grain. Jonathan is the man with the plan, the guy who is in charge of just making sure things actually work at the distillery, and he has a sneaky little plan to ensure fermentation, even if things go a little pear shaped. My choice for the base of our uh, whiskey today is going to be the Nacho Cheese Doritos. And the reason why I chose it is because this is what my grandchildren love the most. I think that that should be the base of a good licorice uh, uh, product here. Figured it's the spiciest Doritos there are is the Flaming Hot. And since we're in Texas, a little spice would be uh, good for everybody. And then we've got the uh, the old favorite of my brother, the uh, Ranch Doritos, kind of cool it off on the back end. So, yeah, cool and hot. The insurance man, what did you get to uh, help make sure there's some sugar in this? These are called beaver nuggets. <laughs> you probably don't have these where you're at. This is a puffed corn coated in a caramelized sugar. So even if we completely screw up on getting sugar out of the, the uh, other ingredients, they should cover us. All right, so we'll hit like, if we completely screw up the mash, we'll have 1% something something to distill. Yeah. All right, deal. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming you probably don't want to go putting Doritos into your standard fermenters. And let's face it, you don't have anything small enough. What's the plan? Preferably right? not. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking we've got a 15-gallon container here. <laughs> May need a little bit of modification for us to be able to get the Doritos directly into this. Uh, Dorito ingest is an issue yes, right now. Yes, we don't. <laughs> So I got a plan. You got a plan? Got a plan. Right, let's do it. So we have our grist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't done the numbers on this, so sorry guys, I can't tell you what percentage of base malt versus specialty we're using today. The her heritage grain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> All right, mate. So you guys have come up with a plan <laughs> of basically making bourbon, but with Doritos. Essentially. Yeah. But uh, I think for this conversation, we need some good whiskey to get stuck into. 
Uh, so I've got the Saints Alley, which is kind of a new, would you call it a line? It's kind of a brand within yeah. the Iron Root House, so okay. uh, in, in the family. So it, we actually do a, a blend with that. So it's a blend of some sourced whiskey from Indiana. Mm -hmm. We blend it with some of our bourbon, and our bourbon's going to add a lot of mouthfeel to it, kind of bring out the mid palate, and then we actually do different finishes with it. So this one in particular that you're trying is in an Armagnac finish, which is one of my favorite things to drink. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand Armagnac at all, and you gave me a real quick crash course the other night, <laughs> and you may have started an, an, another addiction. So thank you and screw you. Oh. You're welcome, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're drinking the standard Harbinger? Well, I mean, this is uh, what we're standard. known for. Yeah, yeah. so this is uh, one of my favorites. This is one of my babies early on. So our first yeah. bourbon blend we ever did. So Harbinger at 115 proof. I see some potential issues fermenting Doritos. What are you thinking? Well, there are some probably some additives in there that might give us oh, yeah. uh, some issues with fermentation. I think we just hit it with like, like a freight train, plow through it with some extra yeast. Right, just enzyme way over pitch just, and yeah, just good. <laughs> okay, over the top. But my gut feeling is that pretty much everything that we're putting in there has already hit its gel temp. The Doritos, they, they actually uh, they cook the corn, then they make basically a mash out of it. And then they fry it at like 300 degrees. So it's. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Should be fried. Should That's be. Sorted. Chilled. Yeah. So, and puff corn should be gelled. So, I, I'm think I don't even know if we have to add any actual heat to it. I think we could probably just mash in water. The enzymes that you're using, are they active at fermentation temperatures, basically? Uh, yes, so typically the, the alpha amylase we add at a little bit warmer temperature, but I think it'll work um, okay. even at room temperature. That was 29 bags. We're supposed to have 35. Hey, Alex, have you seen any? We're missing like five bags of Doritos, six bags. Of... What the heck, man? All right, so this is relatively thick. So we're going to go ahead and add our first enzyme into this guy, and hopefully it'll kind of, kind of thin this out so fermentation can actually occur through this as opposed to it being a solid block at the end of the day. <laughs> so we're just going to pour it in. What's happened? Uh, so typically on our corn fermentations, there's a little bit of oil that sits on the top. Okay. Like little puddles. Eh, just, just a real thin layer. Um, normally it's a good thing. It carries a lot of flavor. Um, this particular fermentation, <laughs> I think we got a good, in the 15 gallon, Yeah. It's probably a good five inches of oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the biggest issue is not for the wash, it is for the future of iron root. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, usually a little bit of corn oil on the top we're not worried about. We make corn-based spirits all the time. Yeah. Um, and so the microstructure of that copper is going to absorb oils to it. That's exactly why we don't run gin through the big copper stills. Um, and we keep kind of everything separate. <clears throat> so in this case, unless we want to have a dedicated Dorito still. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> We'll see how it turns out at the end, but unless we have a dedicated Dorito still for life, um, we might have to uh, try and take that oil off, which I am not looking forward to. No, uh, I did the old finger dip, mm. and it seems like a lot of the nastiest stuff is living in that oil. I, like the funky, weird, it, it's so close to tasting and smelling good, but it's horrible. But it's not. Yeah, we've got options. None of them sound great. No, I'm not happy about it either. <laughs> we could try and skim it. 
We could. But I think we'll agitate it and there's so much of it that we might be there forever. Like it'll kind of mix it in, right? As we are. Yeah, no, we don't we don't want that. No. Uh, my next thought is we draw straws for the bad job. What's that? Siphon it out. Why is that bad? Oh, oh. <laughs> With the oil successfully removed, it's time to get the wash into a still for the stripping run. A stripping run cuts down on volume, cleans the spirit up, and raises the ABV ready for the spirit distillation. For that, we're going to use a different stick. So this is a lab glass still we had custom made for us in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, if you're looking for something lab glass, that's apparently where you get it, is New Jersey. Um, so we had this custom blown for us, and then uh, we typically use this when we distill out gin essences, or the different flavors of the botanicals that go in our gin. Ah. That's typically what happens. We made sure to clean it before we did this because we don't want to ruin the, the Dorito flavor. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm imagining when you make those gins, you're doing each botanical separately, is that, so that's why you got the still? Yeah, correct, and okay. so we, we typically do them, at least in categories, so all the citrus peels will go together, juniper right. goes on together, and so I do them separate. And then you blend after the fact, so yep. like whatever gin profile you You know how much we love to blend. <laughs> that's what they do, yeah. All right, so he's got a heat source on the bottom, they call that a mantle, Okay. And so it's gonna be electrically heated. On the outside of the, uh, the kind of main column here, we've got, uh, <clears throat> We've got it where we run cooling water through there. So this is gonna be a little bit different. Instead of condensing off to the side through a condenser, uh -huh. what's gonna end up happening is, is it's gonna actually condense in line uh, with this column and it's gonna drip back down. We're gonna catch it right here. Uh... And typically we're running it hot enough to where that would be a problem and come out vapor right here. So what we did is we fashioned ourselves a secondary condenser out of a, a tea jug from Walmart. <laughs> so, I, I love your style, man. So the still's up and running. Uh, we've collected four shots. Are you calling them four shots? Uh, I, I think there's still four shots, even though it's Doritos. So I've distilled a lot of different types of corn. I've distilled a lot of different types of, of, of uh, different uh, fruits and brandies, but uh, Never Doritos. So I'm, I'm guessing we should be able to tell when heads are gone based on past experience. Right. Maybe, you know, heads plus a little Cool Ranch in there, but uh, <laughs> okay. we'll just kind of uh, taste and smell and this is blind leading the blind on this <laughs> one, right? So. I don't know, do we want to make this funkier or do we try to, want to try and pull yeah. it back and make it drinkable? I think the question is, do you want to barrel age this or do you want oh. to have it as? <laughs> We've been running this for a while now. This right here is four shots and heads mixed together. The rest of all the hearts have been going in this container over here. It's been fantastic actually so far. It's actually way fruitier than we expected. Uh, we're gonna attribute that to a little bit to the yeast. Some of those notes are even on the kind of more uh, grape based spectrum. So uh, kind of white grapes. Um, and that we've uh, been actually pleasantly surprised by it. So right now we're moving way in, kind of closer to tails, but we're hitting that Dorito note. So we want to be a little more careful as we're heading into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these heads. We're going to swap out the jar and see how far we can go. We're going to go deeper and uh, see how funky it gets. This is pretty good. This is the Dorito flavor we were looking for. So this is actually going to go in with our original hearts. So here we go. And now we're going to 
thirds, which I didn't even know we could do. But we're gonna go deeper and see how weird this gets. <laughs> All right, we did the thing. We, uh, we did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we distilled Doritos, it worked, it fermented. It actually wasn't as weird as I thought it was coming off the still, or what, I, what it could have been. You were hoping it was gonna be weirder, or? I don't know, man, like part of me wished it was just almost undrinkably cheesy. Like mac and cheese in a blender? Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you, like you uh, cold filtered mac and cheese. Yeah, that's on <laughs> There's some Dorito-y aspects to this. Definitely. But it's definitely not a liquid Dorito. No, yeah. it's not. So the biggest surprise for me is that I get almost no cheese off it. Do you get any cheese? Not no, really. No, not much. I get kind of hints of that. A wax rind almost. Yup. And a little bit sweaty. But the big standout, the interesting thing is the corn yeah. profile. Tortilla chips are definitely a present and accounted for. What proof was this? 50 proof. Uh, 50% yeah, anyway, it was 100 proof. Knocked down for analysis, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should taste it. It's actually kind of fruity. And it's cleaner. Like yeah. The palate's cleaner than the nose even. I don't hate that. <laughs> It's got almost like a unbuttered popcorn thing on the back side. Yes, yes, it is very much like that. Yeah, like the the the, the or like smelling the pot after you've yes cooked popcorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe all the cheese was in the oil. <laughs> 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 that stuff was pretty crazy. So what you're saying is we should have left the oil in. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if that still would ever recovered. <laughs> But I wonder if cocktails might be where this shines. Yeah, either that or this needs to be Irish Doritos and it needs to get rid of still one. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. You're about to get a still in the backside. Ooh, no. Dark dirty to me, Jason. <laughs> All right, team, we have now had the Bloody Mary with Doritos spirit, the Dirty Martini with Doritos spirit, and the Lloyd Lake Lemonade with Doritos spirit. Which one wins? I want to hear it for the Bloody Mary. Okay. Uh, the Dirty Martini. With the extra dirty? <laughs> extra dirty, <laughs> yeah. Double dirty. Yeah, Double dirty. Like filthy. Ooh. Uh, oh. Or the Lloyd Lake Lemonade. Yeah. yeah. I got that, sir. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. I get this. <laughs> <laughs> so the message of the story is Dorito Spirit is not that bad, but would we ever do it again? No. No, probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs>